A couple of weeks ago, we reviewed these, the Adam T8V monitors. And we said in that video, we'd do a follow-up video after we'd experimented with some ways in which we might be able to improve the performance of these. Now that video has been a little while coming, so apologies for that. It's because we've been doing lots of experimenting and putting lots of time into it. Now we've tried everything from lining the cabinets with acoustic foam, this stuff, but regular viewers of the channel will know that we think there's really only two things you should be doing with acoustic foam. One is using it as packing material for proper acoustic treatment, and the other one is its use here as a comfy cat bed for flop cat. But it turns out there are also two things you can do to really improve the performance of these. One is probably beyond the scope of the average DIYer and costs a fortune, but the second one can be done by pretty much anyone and costs less than a fiver. But let's find out what those two things are. Firstly, a disclaimer. We do not recommend you take your brand new speakers to pieces or perform any modifications on them whatsoever unless you're happy to risk ruining them and can afford to buy a replacement pair. Even taking the back panel off will certainly void any warranty. So this video is presented as entertainment only. The thing that bugged me most about the T8Vs was the resonance I was hearing from the cabinets. This was particularly apparent at around 100 hertz and again at around 200 hertz. If you tap the woofer, you can clearly hear a ring. Tap the woofer on our ATC SCM 200s and you get this. And on the Kerr Acoustic K100s, you get this. Just good, solid, beefy, low end. Now, let's not forget that the retail price of the ATCs is £32,000 a pair. The K100s come in at around £25,000 a pair and the Adams are around £400 a pair in the UK. So there's a bit of a price difference, but that resonance was really bugging me and I could clearly hear it when I was using the monitors to put a track together for a video we were shooting for Jez Kerr, founder of Kerr Acoustic and creator of these wonderful K100s behind us. We'll play you a before and after clip of that later in the video, but who better to ask for advice on speaker upgrades than Jess, who kindly came down to the studio for a day and we experimented with a few upgrades. We all heard that resonance in the cabinets, so the first job was to track it down and then try to dumb it down. The cabinets themselves are actually solidly constructed from MDF, with some nice internal bracing to them, but very little in the way of wadding. Taking the back off reveals just a single piece rolled up and placed over the tweeter, probably to try and damp the larger surface area of the front baffle. So the first thing we tried was to add some more of this material to see if that made a noticeable difference. It did, but we lost a lot of low end and it was very difficult to apply the wadding without blocking the all important base port. So we took that out again piece by piece and came to the conclusion that the speakers just sounded better without it and with the original rolled piece placed back in. We also experimented with the internal walls of the cabinet with foam and mass loaded vinyl, but this didn't really yield any improvement and the acoustic foam made things sound worse. So it was back to that front baffle and taking it off, removing the drivers and tapping it certainly seemed to point us in the direction in which we needed to head. A few people have asked how you take it off in the comments and that's easy. You just take out the screws from around the front edges of the cabinet and a couple from the middle and off it pops. We asked for suggestions for materials we could use to damp this in our last video and got some great suggestions from you, many of which we tried, but the injection molded design of the plastic front baffle seemed to be crying out for something to be poured in. So I looked at filling the voids with epoxy resin, but this was very expensive and quite complicated. Blue tack worked very well, and I think modeling clay such as plasticine would too, but you need a lot more of this than you'd think, and I wasn't sure it would be a viable long-term solution. So in the end, I decided to fill the voids with cement. This was a standard mortar mix available from any good DIY store with a little lime added to resist cracking when it dries. I painted the inside with PVA and let that dry to give the mortar something to adhere to and then mixed up a small batch of the mortar mix, also adding some PVA to the water to strengthen it and again help avoid cracking. 
Once this was complete, I placed the whole front baffle in a polythene bag and left it in a cool environment to slowly dry over a number of days. Once the cement had dried, we had a very damped front baffle indeed, as expected, and so I reinstalled the drivers and the ceiling strips and fitted it back onto the rest of the cabinet. Here's a before and after clip for you. Damping the front panel resulted in a pretty spectacular improvement in the speaker's performance. So we experimented once more with adding and removing various amounts of wadding and this always seemed to make things a little worse. So it seems that Adam got this right at the design stage. So we were happy with the modifications to the cabinets by just adding mass and adding damping to the front baffle. But was there anything else we could do to up the performance? What about replacing the internal Class D amplification with custom-built passive crossovers and powering them with £15,000 worth of amplifier? Dude. This sounded pretty amazing and really showed off the true quality of the frankly excellent drivers that Adam have incorporated into these monitors. The top end was a lot more detailed and yet somehow smoother and more refined and a solid low end was supported by a more open mid-range that almost sounded like a good three-way monitor. So how do we feel about these monitors after experimenting? Well we came to the conclusion that as they are out of the box, they're some of the best near-field monitors that we've heard for the price, and that still holds true. Deadening the front baffle had the most profound effect, but left stock, if you can't do a good mix on these, then it's certainly not the fault of the speakers. Lots of our viewers have asked us to review the latest Carly monitors, and we've reached out to Carly, but they can't loan us a pair until early next year, so we'll keep you posted on that one. The S3H three-way monitors from Adam are on their way, so make sure you've subscribed and hit the ding-dong to be notified of that video. Thanks for watching, you'll see us in the next one.